Ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? It is Mike, the new guru of the Level Up Show, bringing you my best of E3. And man, is there a lot to choose from. It was hard for me to figure out which exact one I wanted to pick. And I didn't really want to double up on the other guys. Um, and of course, on the last one. So I'm sure you've seen that Drew uh, gave his to God of War. Dean gave his to Horizon Zero Dawn. Greg gave his to Resident Evil. And those were great ones. But those were all very Sony-centric. It's been a very Sony-heavy E3, I feel like, just in terms of presence and show so they definitely deserve a shout out but there's a lot of other studios that did some great things uh so i had to choose down and i got to three total and i have two uh that i want to give a good shout out to and one that i'm going to give my plus one award my best of e3 level up award uh so without further ado let's go into that first i want to talk about one that is very sony centric it is detroit the new game coming from quantic dream uh these guys are a pedigree or have a pedigree as far as delivering quality, story-driven, and almost a matter of choice content in their games. You know, back years ago, I can't remember their original game, but one of the first times that I was experienced uh, with Quantic Dream was with Heavy Rain. Uh, that game, just I loved it. I loved every minute of it. There were some goofy moments, Jason, you know, and everything around through the mall. But Detroit seems to have learned a lot from the mistakes that they made in Heavy Rain, as well as the mistakes that they made in Beyond Two Souls, which is a game that I missed out on, but I didn't really feel like I missed out of it. Detroit demo that we saw in there was very brief, but from the hands-on gameplay that everybody else was talking about, it seems that there are so many different angles. We saw that at the end, the outcome could have been so different, uh, the, you know, just depending on how you approach the situation. But it looks to be a lot of a detective work, which is probably one of the most underused parts of Heavy Rain. I, I died to get back to, uh, I can't remember the, the character's name, but just exploring the area and exploring the, you know, the different things that you can pick up. It seems that you can decipher all like little hidden clues throughout the crime scene you know, where the girl was kidnapped in the beginning of the demo, and then that will actually give you other choices to make as far as dialogue. You know, it will allow you to pick the personal choice of how do I want to approach this? Do I want to be harsher? You know, what's his actual issue? What, you know, what outcomes can I choose from this? So I'm extremely eager. I'm extremely excited to get to play this um, at some point. So I'm hoping that's coming next year. Uh, we haven't gotten, I don't know if we got an official confirmation on that or not, but man, I'm extremely excited for that. I, I'm dying to sink my hands into that. Um, the next shout out I want to give to uh, runner up is one that almost got my game of show. And I don't know why I didn't give it my official game of show. There was something about my official game of show that will, you know, just outdid it. But Ghost Recon, I love these types of games. If anybody knows the type of game streams that I do, uh, or hears what I talk about on the show, they know that this is the type of game that's right down my alley. It's made by a slew of developers in Ubisoft from Paris to, I think, uh, Bucharest. I think there's a bunch of guys working on it, but they did a very good job. It feels very, uh, I would guess, Metal Gear Solid Five mixed with Grand Theft Auto because it's very open, uh, but it's also, at the same time, a little bit more succinct. It's definitely uh, more attentive to the combat play and infiltrating missions and stuff like that. So I think they did a very good job blending a lot of you know current gameplay style together. Uh, from the hands-on impressions that I've seen from other people and the gameplay I've watched, it's just something I'm dying for. You know, there's multiple play styles, whether you want to go in all you know, silent and then, you know, take down, you know, characters that you need to, or your enemies one by one to secretly infiltrate the area you need to get to, or if you want to go balls to the wall with, you know, Humvees with a gun mounted on it, you know, flying on the chopper, whatever you want to do, there's multiple different ways to play. And this is accentuated by the way that you have to customize your character, very similar to things like a Metal Gear Solid, or if anybody's familiar with almost any other shooter based, you know, Ubisoft game, they're very going to, they're going to be very comfortable with this. And this is perfect for me. It's going to uh, encourage a lot of good teamwork, a lot of good communication. Um, and, and it looks good too. It doesn't, you know, it's not the best looking game I've seen, you know, on a console, but this looks great. And I, I, that, I think there's something about it. I, I don't know. I feel like you could get a little, you know, get, get a little stale out there a little while, but overall, everything I've seen from both the gameplay at the official conference and the hands-on impressions that I saw from behind the scenes, you know, it, it looks exactly like what I want. And I, you can bet, you know, you're going to see me do a stream of that game when it does come out next year in March. Uh, but now, officially, my game of show will go out to another Ubisoft game. Ubisoft's worked a very good deal with these guys to make probably one of the most entertaining games I've ever played in my life, and now the sequel is going to come out at the end of this year. Matt Parker and Trey Stone. Trey Parker and Matt Stone. I can't remember their freaking name. Trey Parker and Matt Stone. I'm the worst. 
are giving us South Park the fractured butthole, and we got our first hands-on impressions of what it's going to look like. Uh, and one of the things we saw at the beginning is a lot more customization options, and that really appeals to me. South Park Sick of Truth felt good, but it felt a little limited, both in terms of character selection, I'll get later on into the combat, um, but character selection, it looks like we're going to get about 12 different character choices throughout. We got teased at three of them officially. Uh, one that was used a lot was a speedster. Uh, we also saw a brutalist, which kind of looked like the thing, as well as a blaster class that looks a little bit like Cyclops, but it's also a girl. What's cool about that, and what I really appreciate, is that you will get to play as a girl, and not only will you get to play as a girl, but you will be interacted with differently because you're a girl. They actually wanted to implement this ability into Stick of Truth, but because of the girl section in that game, it wouldn't feel right. It would have just been you know, odd and awkward. And so they implemented into this, and they said it was a lot of work, but your interaction with other characters, both NPC and other players that you're going to control, will be different than if you play as a boy. So this is great to me. Um, but each class will have its own layout um, as, as far as, you know, attacks and defense as well as their superpowers obviously this is you know a big you know clear thing <laughs> you can't have a speedster doing you know a big giant heavy attack it's gonna make sense unless later on in the game you make what's we're, i assume is a hybrid class supposedly later in the game you will get the choice to combine your class with another type of class and make some sort of hybrid so i'm sure your i'm sure your two attacks will you know merge together um which is really cool but as on top of that, we did see in the trailer uh, the origin story. It was very funny, very similar to the Flash's origin because it's a speedster. You know, wake up in the middle of the night, hear a ruffle, you know, go to see what it is. But you know, it's his parents having sex. But in this, it seems to be that every character has their own individual origin story, and the way that the characters react, like Kyle, how he reacted to Cartman, um, you know, claiming that you know getting fucked isn't a big thing, uh, is going to be very entertaining. So I, I'm very much looking forward to that. Um, on top of everything seeing fresh as far as the com the character design, the combat design looks similar as well, where it's not just turn-based. And that was my second problem I had with Stick of Truth, just like the character choices were limited. The combat was limited. It's, it, I love turn-based RPGs, don't get me wrong, but something about this grid-style play really appealed to me. So you move your character uh, from grid to grid, the enemies will move from grid to grid, and where you position your character will affect how the gameplay is set. So if you're a speedster, you can actually be a couple blocks back and then run in, and then attack your, you know, your the enemy so you can't get hit by their attacks if they have a big heavy attack in front of you. You can place yourself behind other objects like boxes uh, to make sure that you won't get hit by their attacks as well. Some cool things that we did see in the trailer uh, in, in the description by the guys was that you can knock other the enemies into other players and other objects. So this would be great if you're knocking, you know, we saw... Um, we saw the you know, a couple of characters getting knocked down. We also saw some of them getting hit into another player, so it would be a combo attack. So that really is really cool. They're, they're definitely giving a fresh face to the combat style, and this is something I'm eagerly looking forward to. Um, on top of all that, the dialogue is going to be the same. A lot of dialogue has been great, um, as it always was, and I love that it hasn't gotten stale. That was my biggest worry for a sequel um, out of these. It's not that you know I don't have much to go off of with the show. I think the show is still great and actually has gotten better for many things as time has gone on. But it hasn't seemed that the dialogue in the game uh, between you know just actual script right you know part of the story and dialogue interaction between you know and the combat it doesn't look like it's gotten very boring or anything like that. So it seems to be very fresh, uh, which I really really like. Um, there is a new crafting feature. Now, I don't really know too much about this. I haven't seen uh, very much about it as well, but I, I, anything that involves crafting, you know, you know you have my attention. You know you have Dean's attention. You know, we love the ability to reshape and mold uh, the way that our characters play and, you know, the objects that we can use. So anything revolving around that is really awesome to me. Um, and on top of that, you have much more reason to explore. And Stick of Truth, the town was perfect. And I did explore, but it did get a little mundane. Most of the houses were the same old things. Unless you went into a named character's house like Craig or Stan or Kyle or whoever, Kenny. It doesn't matter. If you went to their houses, it was very entertaining. It was very funny. You know, you got a lot of, like, insight into that character. We got a lot of little nods. You got, I think we had the Chin Pokemon um, in Cartman's house and throughout the whole level. But in this, there's going to be a reason to go to every different area because you will be able to find those pieces to craft. And on top of that, there's different ways to get to these places. You're going to have to recruit other characters to be on your side in this South Park Civil War. Um, so when you when you access those different characters, you get new areas to explore and new areas to go into, uh, as well as new ways to do it. They, farting is a big thing for South Park. I remember that from 
the combat and stick of truth and fart into your hand throughout the enemy. But now, farting not only allows you to rip the fabric of space-time, but also use something called fart core, um, and you'll be able to jet propel yourself uh, into something else, which is not, you know, different. Stick of Truth had something similar. But they definitely seemed like they really didn't want to rehash any of the same ideas. Um, and, and they really put a lot of thought and effort into it. Part of the issue, I think, from the first game was they actually had to actually sit down and figure out what area, what place all these different locations were in. They had never sat down. They had said to figure out what, uh, you know, where Kyle's house was exactly, where the apartment's house was, where the school was, you know, relation. They just knew it was these general areas they had to sit down and do that. I think that took a lot of time and a lot of effort away from a lot of creativity, you know, creative ideas, as well as the way that things have progressed in game. Uh, so I think this is a nice new fresh face for South Park, but it shows that they put the attention into the detail of making it feel different and making it not feel like the same old game just as a sequel. They wanted to make it feel like it could stand on its own. You wouldn't have had to play the first game to love this one. Um, and I think that's why I gave my game a show. You know, even as much as I love Ghost Recon, Wildlands, this, because it felt so fresh in every single way, uh, I, I definitely give them a lot of respect and a lot of credit for that. So good job, guys. Over there with uh, with Ubisoft and uh, Matt Parker and Trey Stone, Trey Parker, Matt Stone, whatever the fuck, I don't really care. But you guys did a phenomenal job, uh, and I cannot wait to play this game. I want to pre-order it so I can play Stick of Truth again. Um, so you guys get the Level Up Plus One Award for Best of Show at E3. Um, man, guys, this E3 was phenomenal, uh, and I, I, none of us lost. There was nobody that lost unless you watched EA's press conference, because that was just a big giant pile of turds. But... Everything else was pretty good. You know, nothing was bad in any way, shape, or form. And the games we got, us as gamers, have nothing to do but be happy. We have so much to look forward to, um, especially things like South Park, Ghost Recon, Detroit, um, and all the games. So, can't wait to see you guys. Thank you so much. This has been an awesome year to do E3, and I'm looking so forward to next year and giving you guys my new game of the year. Uh, so, as always, don't forget to stay classy and level up.